Hello friends, welcome to another Tech Tip Tuesday, where we give you tech tips the day after Monday. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Git hooks. By the end of this video, you'll understand all about Git hooks, what they are and where they run. You'll also be able to create some basic hooks for yourself and have an understanding of some more advanced features. Before we get into it, I'd really appreciate it if you'd consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. It helps the Google gods recommend us in the future and really helps us out. With that out of the way, let's dive straight in. Let's first take a look at the workflow that you go through when you're creating software and using Git. So if this is you here on my screen, the first thing that you generally do is write some code and that gets staged and tracked by Git. Then you make a commit and that goes into your local stash. When you make that commit, before it happens, you can trigger a Git hook and you can get it to automatically run some scripts and you can get it to block that commit if it fails conditions that you set. You're then gonna push a series of commits to your remote repository. Before that push leaves your computer, you can trigger another hook, a pre-push hook, and you can prevent them from leaving and entering your remote repository if that hook fails. And of course, then we have server side. So the first two are on your local environment. And these are great. You have a lot of control around these. And then you also have hooks that you can put on your server side, right? Where your Git server sits. And for instance, pre-receive. So before it gets into your repository, but after it's left your computer, you can run something. When we talk about Git hooks, three come up the most often. Pre-commit, pre-push, pre-receive. If you know how to use Git, you probably know exactly what all of these already do. There's actually a whole bunch more, and there's more than even what I have on the screen right now. What you need to know is that the Git hooks all work in exactly the same way. So after today, you're gonna to understand really how they work, and you're gonna be able to write your own ones, and it doesn't matter what hooks you're going to be using. Now there's one more thing I wanna talk about before diving in and creating our first hook, and that is understanding the difference between a local and a global hook, right? Probably pretty self-explanatory. A local hook sits inside your repository. I'll show you exactly where it is in a minute. And this runs just on this repository, just this project, right? Nothing else is concerned. You can set up a global hook. And this means that it's gonna run on all of your repositories. So just keep that in mind. And of course, there's lots of different ways to be able to do this. And I'm gonna run you through the one that I prefer. Okay. So we're all caught up on what Git hooks are, what they do. Let's create our first Git hook. So I've got my IDE open here. I'm using Visual Studio. Whatever IDE you use, that's fine. Everything's gonna work in the same way. I have my terminal down here and my code will be up the top. I'm navigated right now into an empty project, an empty directory called Git hooks. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna initialize Git with Git init, obviously. And what does this do? This creates a folder. It creates a .git directory, a .git folder. On my navigator, you can see this a little bit more clearly. So this is the folder we have here. If you can't see it, it just means that you have hidden files not showing. So just make sure that you turn your hidden files on. If we navigate into this folder, we'll see some things here. We won't worry about a lot of them, but we will look in this folder here that says hooks. And in here, you'll see we have a lot of hooks that are named that are called dot sample. I'm gonna get rid of this and I'm gonna navigate into using my IDE now. So these are all the hooks that come standard out the box every time you initialize Git. So if you have old Git directories, so long as you haven't messed around with the template settings, these will all be in those folders. So we have here the pre-commit, the pre-merge, pre-apply patch, so on and so forth. To create our first Git hook, it's actually ridiculously easy. All that we need to do is take one of these hooks, go to rename and remove dot sample. That's it. Every time Git performs an action, it looks inside this hooks folder and see if there is an applicable hook that is valid. If it is, it will run that, the script that you write will be executed. We don't need to update any configurations. That will happen at the box. Inside this 
pre-commit folder, we can see some code. Now this is written in bash, as you can see by the first line here, right? SH. You can write your Git hooks in any scripting language. So you can use Python, you can use Perl. In this video, I'm gonna be using bash. Um, and you can also get frameworks that you can write them even in things like JavaScript, but that's a little bit advanced. We'll worry about that at the end of the video. So if you understand uh, Bash, and even if you don't, thanks to the helpful notes in this file, you'll probably be able to understand what's actually happening in here. Some simple checks to make sure that we're using ASIC for the file names and some different areas. One of the things that this cook is doing out the box is it's checking for trailing white space error. And this is what this very last one is here. And so this makes it actually really easy just to trigger our first Git hook. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create some files in here. I'm first gonna create a file called main.py. And I'm also just gonna create a .git ignore file. And I'm just gonna put a quick file in here so that it's not tracked by Git. If you wanna know what a .git ignore file is, then look at one of the other previous Tech Tip Tuesday videos when we go through that. All right, I'm gonna open up my main.py file and all I'm gonna do is add some errors by putting in a bunch of white spaces. So if we save this and we try and commit this file, we should be blocked by the pre-commit git hook. And we are. You'll see here that we it's given us a trailing white spaces error and it's actually exited from that hook. So if we go git status, we'll see that there are no commits yet. This has been blocked. Now this is really helpful when we're writing git hooks, knowing that we can actually exit out of it and prevent the action, right? We can write git hooks that just allow it through. It doesn't always have to exit. We have to write that in, but it's helpful to know that that is happening because we don't need to do anything about our git history. We don't need to rebase or uh, use a soft head. We can just continue on as normal and remove these trailing white spaces, which if I do that and I do the exact same thing, we'll see that we've it's all gone through uh, no troubles at all. Right, that's it. Congratulations, you've made your first git hook. That's the end of the video. Obviously, I'm kidding. Uh, let's go in now and actually have a look at what's going on in these git hooks. So then we can actually understand a little bit more. So back in our hooks file, we're gonna go to our pre-commit. I'm gonna rename this back dot sample because I just want to preempt an error that I think a lot of people tend to get the first time uh, that they are using git hooks. So I'm just going to navigate into my hooks folder, my hooks directory. And in here, I'm going to create a file called pre commit, right? So this is exactly what we have. So we now have our pre commit file right here. And our last one has gone back to, to sample. So this is what we're going to be working in from now. So the first line that we need to put in for this file is letting it know what to expect. That it's gonna be expecting an SH bash, so we can move forward. And what's always the first thing we learn to do in programming? Well, we learn to say hello world. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've navigated back to my main directory and let's go ahead Now I'm just gonna make an arbitrary change into my main.py file so it's tracked by git. And I can go git add main.py again. And we get an error. Now this is just a very simple error that I wanted to preempt uh, in case anyone's following along. Now, if you're familiar with programming, you probably even know what you need to do right now. And we need to change the permissions of our pre-commit. So the file that we created doesn't have adequate permissions to run as an executable. How do we change that? Simple command, shmod, chmod. So, we, so let's do this now. We go shmod, 
u plus x and then we just need to type in the path of so we can here we can just put it for our pre-commit or if we have multiple commits in there we can use the wild card and do it for all of them so let's go ahead and do that and this will make a slight change on the file. You'll notice here that this is now an ex executable by the small icon, and it will also be evident in your main directory. You can see here that it's now as an executable uh, before it wouldn't have had that icon. So now I'm just going to go ahead and make another commit. Now I've just made a completely empty commit because I don't want to keep making arbitrary changes, but that has still worked. You'll see here, hello world, my first Git hook. So congratulations, we've written our first ever Git hook. But now let's do something that has a little bit more substance to it. Something that's actually going to help us with our productivity. One of the problems that we face a lot in development is we don't commit enough. But there is a solution to actually make people commit more using Git hooks. And it's only one line of code. So to do this incredible productivity booster, we're going to write a quick curl command. So this is just making an API call. And we're making an API call to this URL here. You'll find a link in the description. But it's iCanHasDadJoke.com. HTTPS iCanHasDadJoke.com. <laughs> If you know my sense of humor, you're probably going to guess what's going to happen. But let's save this and let's go ahead and make another empty commit. I'm just going to go ahead with the exact same commit message. We're going to go ahead. And now we have our hello world for a skit hook. But we also have, did you hear about the kidnapping? I'll move my head. Did you hear about the kidnapping at school? It's okay. He woke up. Ah. Oh. Man, that took me a long time. <laughs> that took me a long time to get that. <laughs> what? Oh my God. Okay. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> but you get the idea, right? We're going to reward ourselves with a, dad, with a dad joke every time we make a commit. It helps us commit more. That's what I'm telling myself. All right, let's clear this here. All right, so we can print some stuff off. We can make a call. But none of this is interacting with really any of the information that we've actually committed. So what I want to do now is actually create something slightly more powerful, uh, actually this time, that's interacting with the information inside our commit. Uh, and again, it's really not going to be that difficult. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to do an absolute cardinal sin. And I'm going to paste some credentials inside my file. So I know this isn't formatted quite correctly, but you get the idea. We have some AWS access ID and an AWS access key. Hard coding secrets like this is never a good idea, but it's one of the best use cases for Git hooks because you can catch when these things have been hard coded into your source code. Because remember, Git keeps a track of everything that you do. So if you've committed some secrets in the history, uh, it's going to be there forever. And these secrets may be hard coded into your files, but they also could be inside debug logs or environment variables. So really important that we don't commit these. So let's write a hook that's going to find this secret and block the commit from going through. Now in this exact use case, I'm just going to be looking for this specific type of credential. This is an AWS credential. Now, it has certain characteristics, which makes it easy to find. Um, we're not going to write out some elaborate program to find all secrets. So to do this, we're going to be using a pretty cool function called git grep. So if you know what grep is, it's basically just a way of being able to search uh, through information. And in this case, it's going to be searching through our commit. And it's incredibly simple to do. Now, if you want, you can code along with me, or if you don't want, there's a link to my GitHub, which has just a folder that, that has this code in it as well, if you just want to copy it. So if git grep, then we're going to put in the parameters of what we're looking for. So we're telling it to look in our commit for a string a to Z, 0 to 9, that's 20 characters long. 
And then we're going to give ourselves a message if we find this. And I'm just going to say, hey, if we find this, you've hard coded a secret, you don't get a joke. And then we're going to exit out of this. Now, what this should do is it because our dad joke is running uh, after this, we should actually exit that commit before it's finished. And we should say, hey, we've found a secret. We're not going to go any further. All right, let's test this all out. So I've saved that credential in my main.py file. Now let's add it. Let's add an inconspicuous message <laughs> like this. Uh, and let's go ahead and see what happens. So you see our hook has run. Hello world, my first hook. And then it's actually said, hey, in your main.py file, I found this AWS access key. This is it here. This matches the parameters of the git grep that you just wrote. And then it says, you've hard coded a secret, no joke for you. And we can see that it's actually exited it because we don't get our joke. And we can confirm this by going git status. And we can still see that this is staged and modified. So there we have it. We've just written some grep that interacts with the commit data that tries and finds secrets. Now there's a tiny or small problem with using this in real world scenarios. And that is that the grep we wrote, well, it's not that good. When we're dealing with large projects, there's going to be lots of strings that are going to match the criteria of this. And we're going to create a lot of false positives. The last thing that developers want is to be interrupted in their workflow by false positives. Luckily for us, though, there's lots of great tools that we can use for this type of secrets detection. And we're going to use them. And the advantage is that we're going to learn uh, some of the other cool things that we can do with Git hooks. So I'm just going to comment all this out. I'm going to move my dad joke up here. I have a package installed onto my computer called GG Shield. Now GG Shield can do lots of things involving secrets detection. You can scan directories, scan your entire Git histories for these types of secrets. And one of the things you can use it for is within Git hooks. So if you want to follow along with me, I have a video that I'll make up here about how to use GG Shield and install it. It's really quick. You can use pip. But if you don't have GG Shield installed, you can still follow along in what I'm doing. So right now in my Git hook, I'm going to call GG Shield. GG Shield has a function called secret scan and it has an option for pre-commit so it knows how to handle the data. And then we're going to pass it the commit data. So that's literally it. That's how I can kind of call a separate package and send it the commit metadata that I want or the, the metadata that the hook's using uh, to do a thing, right? And in this case, that thing is detecting secrets. So because our last hook got blocked, if I just do the same uh, commit again, So we get our message, our first hook, and then, well, it does stuff. So let's have a look at what's happened. So, hello world, my first hook, yes. And now the rest is being done by GG Shield. So it's saying, hey, in main.py, we have an incident detected. So that's obviously a secret. And here's where it gets much more powerful. It's telling us that it's AWS keys. It's correctly identified the keys. It's telling us it's valid. So it's checked with AWS that these keys are actually valid. That's pretty cool. Um, and then it gives us exactly where the secret are. It's hidden some of it. And it gives us some advice on how to remediate it. Uh, and we'll see that this is still uh, under modified. So it hasn't gone through. So that's cool, but this is in the video on GG Shield. What this really shows is that we can call packages and we can send it the information just like we can in any other bash script. So we don't need to write everything ourselves. We can interact with different packages and libraries that are on our machine. So that's a pretty cool feature. So I feel like now you've probably got a good idea of how Git hooks 
uh, actually work. And you may have some ideas of what you can do uh, with them. You can create some hooks to send you reminders when you do certain things. You can create hooks to check out certain branches. You can do lots of powerful things. In this video, the idea isn't to go through all of them. But I do want to look at another type of hook here. This is going to be a pre-commit hook as well. But the difference is that this is going to be a global pre-commit hook. So at the start of this video, I said that we can have local hooks and global hooks, right? So a local is what we've been doing. And this works just in this project, just in the Git hooks project that we created at the start. But we can actually set up a global Git hook that will work on all repositories. So just to talk about global hooks at the moment. Now, of course, there's multiple ways to be able to do everything. And some people will prefer different ways. One way to set up a global hook or kind of a global hook is to actually modify the templates when you initialize your Git repository. So remember when we did Git init at the very beginning, it came up with all these sample Git hooks. Well, we can actually set it up so that we use our own templates every time we initialize. So that way, the same hook can be applied to all the projects that you set up. I don't necessarily like this way. Why? Because if I want to make a change, I have to go back and reinitialize or copy that file across to all my different projects. It's not like a real global center. But the other way that we can set up a global Git hook, which is what I will do now, is to basically tell Git that I don't want you to look in the standard file for Git hooks anymore. I don't want you to look in the project under the dot .git slash hooks. I want you to look in this specific folder, this specific directory, in this specific location on my machine. Now it can be anywhere and it can be in any folder, uh, but we're gonna set it up in the same way that this, I have it set up on my machine. So here we are in this directory. And what this is, is we've just navigated to the absolute root of the user on my machine, right? And yes, we can see lots of kind of files and config files. This here is where our git config file is automatically set up. Um, that's basically stores the configurations of our Git. So there's lots of things in here. And it's in our root directory, I'm going to create a folder called .git. So I'm going to put a hooks folder in there, a hooks directory in there. And then I'm going to tell Git to look in this specific folder for hooks from now on. So let's do that. So first thing, let's create our folder. So this symbol here, in case you don't know, just is telling my machine to make a directory at the root. So not in the current folder. And we're going to do the same thing for our hooks. And then finally, we're now going to create a pre commit hook. So what you'll see now is we actually have this folder that's being created the dot git folder. In here we have a folder called hooks, just like what we do in our local. And here we have our pre-commit file that we just have. Now, just like before, we need to change the permissions of our pre-commit so it can run as an ex executable. So again, shamod u plus x, and then we're going to put it. Now we can either again set it to just the one file, or if you have multiple files in that same uh, directory, you can use the wildcard. And now you can kind of see how this changes icons into an executable. Of course, this may look different if you're on Windows or Linux, but uh, it will serve the same function. Right, so we've changed our permissions so that we can now run this file as an executable. The next thing we need to do is we need to tell Git that, hey, I don't want you to use the standard setup anymore. I want you to use this pre-commit. And we can do that as well. And we can do that by looking at the global git, uh, the global hooks path. So if we go git config, global core dot hooks path, it will return nothing. We don't have any special path set up. So all we need to do is at the end of this, put in where we want it to look. And we want it to look in our .git slash hooks folder located at the root of the directory. 
So if I go ahead and do that, if I look for our path again now, you'll see that it's navigating to usersmckenzie.githooks. Right, but right now we don't have anything in our git hook. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a split screen of my code here. We'll move this across. So here we have our local hook, and I'm gonna change this here. And here we're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna copy this across, but we're gonna make it our global. So let's go ahead and commit something and see what happens. All right, so what's happened? Our global hook has run. You can see that text here, but our local one has not run, right? It hasn't run GG Shield and it hasn't said, hello, this is my local hook. So what does this mean? Well, this means that both don't actually run. We've pointed our git config to our global and that's what's running. But this causes a problem. The problem is that there are certain things that I may want to do globally. I probably want to check for secrets on all of my repositories all the time. But maybe there's something specific in this project that I don't want to do in other projects. And we can actually do that. There's a little bit of a roundabout way of what we do, but it makes total sense. We're writing in bash. We can call other functions in bash. So what we should do is let's call our local hook from our global hook. That will work, right? So this code here, again, you're gonna find this in the GitHub tutorial uh, and project that I made, the links in the description. Um, but all this is doing is an if statement that's saying, hey, if we have a pre-commit hook, then I want you to run it. I want you to send it the data, right? I want you to send it that pre-commit data. If that fails, then then we're gonna fail it uh, at that point there. Okay, so let's check this out at the moment. What I'm going to do just quickly is I'm, we've committed our secret now. So I'm just gonna move it down a little bit so that it triggers again. And here's what should happen. We should get the message, hello, that this is my global get hooks. I'm gonna put hook because <laughs> it's only one. And then it's gonna say, hello, this is my local hook. Then it's going to run GG Shield, and hopefully it should fail and block that commit. So let's see if we are right. Git add main.py. Testing double hooks. Let's go ahead. All right, we got the first message. We got our first message. Yes, we got our second message. Yes, so that means that we have successfully called our local hook from our uh, from our global, and GG Shield is now running. Fantastic! It's detected our secret, and it's blocked the hook. The hook. Get status. Yes, it's still modified. All right. We've come to the end of the video. I hope that you've actually been able to create some hooks with me. You've got something set up and you have an idea of how you might wanna use this. Lots of different ways to use hooks and you can actually get quite deep into it. If you're looking to learn more about hooks, what I would recommend is taking a look into the pre-commit framework. Now it's called the pre-commit framework. It does a lot more than just pre-commit <laughs> hooks. Um, but I guess that's where it probably started. What this framework does is creates a language agnostic environment in which you can create hooks. And what's really cool about it is that there's hundreds and probably thousands of hooks that other people have created that can serve specific functions. And using this framework, it's really easy to chain them together using a simple configuration file for it. If you wanna up your game in Git hooks, now that you understand the fundamentals and how they work, then start by checking out the pre-commit framework. And if you would like me to create a video on the pre-commit framework, then let me know, I'll be happy to do that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out.